Hello everyone. Today I'm going to take you through a relatively new feature in Power BI Service called Deployment Pipelines. Now you may have heard about this recently in the Power BI blog or from another couple of sites, um, but Deployment Pipelines is great for really controlling your change management process. When we think about change management and how you publish your reports and data sets and data flows to your Power BI Service tenant, there's really two distinct methods you can take in terms of really controlling your data sets. First one is that you've got three separate workspaces. We'll call them, for this example, we'll call them development, UAT, and production. Now you've got these three workspaces that are you know, basically distinct workspaces and you're publishing your data sets, reports, data, you know, things like that up to these workspaces when you're ready to go. There's no real connection between the three of them apart from the fact that they're named you know, different pieces of the lifecycle management. Um, the other distinct way you can control your change management is through deployment pipelines. Now, within the past year or so, it's become way more uh, efficient to use deployment pipelines. And so there's been some great updates to this, and I'm going to give you a quick little demo into how it works. So you can see here I'm on Power BI service, powerbi.com. And on the left-hand side, if I pop this open, you'll see this uh, little tab here that says deployment pipelines. We go ahead and clone that. It takes me to this screen where it says create a deployment pipeline. So it's create a pipeline, assign your workspace, develop and test your content, and then share with your users. So let's go through the process of actually creating a pipeline and showing you, you know, some of the permissions issues, some of the permissions updates, things like that that you can run into when you're going through the pipeline process. So we'll first, go ahead and click create a pipeline. First thing it's going to say is create a pipeline name and a description. So we'll call this pipelines test. Call it test pipeline. Go ahead and hit create. Now it's going to bring you to this screen, and the three stages are called development, test, and production. Now these can really be assigned any way, any which way you want. Um, a, a normal way I've seen them assigned would be uh, development, UET production, you can use development test production, you know, it kind of just depends on uh, which, which, what, wh which way makes sense for your, uh, for your tenant. So our first step here is you want to choose a workspace to assign to this stage. And essentially what you're doing is assigning a workspace to each of these different stages so that they can commingle. Comm so it says choose a workspace to assign to this stage, we'll hit select. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and use DP demo, deployment pipeline demo. For test, I'm going to do the same thing and assign a workspace. We'll go to DP demo test. We'll hit assign a workspace on both of these. All right, perfect. Now, kind of draw your attention to these four icons. So the four different pieces of artifacts that you can have in your workspace are data flows, data sets, ports, and dashboards. The number next to them are just, you know, the quantity of each of these that exist currently in that workspace. So we can see I've got zero data flows, three data sets, three reports, and zero dashboards. In the test section, I've got zero, two, two, and zero. So maybe it's slightly different, but technically we don't know yet. Let's say for this example, you know, you, you could have 100 in one and 150 in the other. Unless you really go through and compare them, you won't know what exists in one and, and what exists in the other. I can hit show more and that'll show me exactly what exists. So let's say I'm ready to see what the differences are between the DP demo and DP demo test. We're going to go ahead and hit compare. Now a few different icons have appeared here. We've got this yellow one that has an equal sign slash through it and then a plus two in green. The yellow essentially means it's different. So in this case, we've got one data set that's different, and you can see it right here. Adventure works from SQL, tooltip page complete. Now, this data set is slightly different than one that exists in my target stage. They both exist in, you know, this, this, this data set exists in both workspaces, but the data set itself is slightly different. That's why you're seeing that yellow different. There's also two new things. So you can see we've got deployment pipelines demo, the data set, and then the report itself. And these are new. Uh, they don't exist in my test workspace. So just two new things. When I'm ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and hit deploy to test. 
So let's say I'm, I've vetted these, I'm ready to go, I wanna push these up to my test workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and hit deploy to test. And it's gonna say one item in the destination workspace will be replaced. And that's because, like I said, it exists in both workspaces. We're just replacing it. Hit continue, copying the content. Give it just a second. Okay, so that's finished. And you can see this green check mark now, which means uh, they are the workspaces are the same now. No changes were made to content since the last deployment. So we're good to go now. If we click the drop down show more, you can now see these are exactly the same. So deployment pipelines, you know, a fantastic way to control these. Um, couple of other couple of other features I want to point your attention to. So the first one is this lightning bolt right up here in the top right. It says deployment settings when I hover over it. Now these are settings to really control your data sources and parameters. If I click on that, it takes me to deployment rules. So let's say I want to set up a deployment rule on my deployment pipelines demo. Go ahead and click on that. And you can see it says under data source rules, there's a there's an option to add a rule. What's happening here is, let's say, for example, you've got a production database and a development database, and your report itself is, or your data set, is you know, going through the regular deployment pipelines process where you're going from development to production. But you don't necessarily want to use the production database on your development report, or vice versa. There's a couple ways you can update that. The first one is by going into the PBIX file itself and updating the source. It works, but it can, you know, it can take a little while and uh, maybe you don't necessarily want to do that. A much easier way to automate this is to add a rule. So if I go ahead and click add rule, I want to replace my data source in my development workspace. So let's go ahead and click on AdventureWorks 2016. That's one of my uh, sources. And what do I want to replace it with when it gets to the test workspace? I want to replace it with this, this one right up here. And as soon as I hit save, that's going to be saved. And what's going to happen is anytime the deployment pipelines demo data set gets deployed to the test workspace, the data source is changing from AdventureWorks 2016 to this lab work uh, data set over here. So it's a great way to automatically update your data sources. And you can actually do the same thing with parameter rules. Um, I don't currently have any parameters on this data set, but the exact same thing works. You can actually control them from here. So it's a pretty fantastic way of controlling, um, you know, which databases you're hitting and without actually uh, going into the file itself and updating them. Uh, one last thing I wanna point your attention to is permissions. Now deployment pipelines permissions are completely separate from the workspace itself. So you have, in order to deploy a report or a data set or you know, a data flow or dashboard from one workspace to the other, you have to be at least, two, two things have to occur. You have to, number one, you have to be at least a member of both workspaces. And number two, you have to have access to the deployment pipeline. So you can see deployment pipelines test, there's a little access section right here. And I can add you know, whatever person I want or email address I want, but there's really only one setting right now, which is admin. It's pretty much just that you have access to the deployment pipeline. So just keep that in mind as you're uh, using deployment pipelines to control your change management process.